You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Welcome to Expresso, episode 30. This episode, it's a deep dive episode, meaning it's a double episode. I'm going to dive a little deeper into the game. I feel this game warrants it. So, this episode, I'm taking a look at Fantastic Voyage. This is by 20th Century Fox, or aka Fox Interactive, back in 1982. So, this game is uh, loosely based, I guess, on the... 1966 American science fiction adventure film Fantastic Voyage, directed by Robert Fleischer, or sorry, Richard Fleischer, and written by Harry Kleiner. This is based on a story by Otto Clement and Jerome Bixby. Uh, the film is about a submarine crew who has shrunk to microscopic size and mentioned to the body of an injured scientist to repair damage to his brain. Uh, really neat. Um, this film had Donald Pleasance in it and Arthur Kennedy, amongst other people. Uh, Stephen Boyd, Raquel Welch, um, kind of a cool cast, Arthur O'Connell. Anyway, uh, so, um, this game, I have to say, I actually love it. It's so fun. Um, now I have seen some reviews on this. They weren't quite as favorable as mine's going to be, but I actually love this game. It's got pretty good graphics. you you really do feel like you're inside of a body. Um, the fact there's a heart monitor kind of makes the game more fun because there are things you shouldn't shoot as well. Uh, inside this body. So let's go ahead and read some of the manual here. Uh, it says, The objective is you and your submarine are to be injected into the bloodstream of a critically ill patient. Your mission is to blast your way through several phases of artery obstacles and destroy a life-threatening blood clot. Well, this is some blood clot, man. This is... <laughs> it says... The controls. Once inside the patient's bloodstream, your sub will be carried along in a steady forward motion. Tilt the joystick forward to increase your speed or backward to slow down or back up slightly. Your sub is equipped with medical technology's finest laser ray. Press the joystick button to activate it. Hold the button down for continuous fire. You may, pa uh, you may pause the game at any time during the play by flipping the color black and white switch. Uh, there are play options. Option 1 is a normal game. Option 2 is an extended normal game. Option 3 is a difficult version for advanced players. Option 4 is extended difficult version. Option 5 is easy game for beginners. Option 6 is extended easy game. Did I say one of those twice? God, I hope not. Anyway, um, so pretty neat. Uh, it says in the extended versions, the first five phases of your voyage are longer. In the difficult options, you will face more obstacles on your journey to the blood clot. In the easy options, collisions cause less damage to the patient and there is no time penalty. Each time you destroy a blood clot, you are given the chance to save another patient in the same play option. So there is a heart monitor at the bottom and stuff. <clears throat> it says here, screen display scoring. While in the demo mode, the play option is shown at the top of the screen. The score is displayed there while the game is in play. A time clock is located in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. A heart monitor is located in the bottom center, and a patient's saved tally is in the bottom right corner. So I think I get up to two in this, maybe? Uh, the heart monitor is a graphic display of the patient's condition. Patients begin each game with a strong, steady heartbeat. Each time your sub crashes into any object, the patient loses strength. Uh, the Phases Obstacles section describes additional qualities of each object. Every time the slower hand of the time clock completes a cycle, the patient also loses strength. A flat heart rate means that you have lost the patient and the game is over. So there is a little picture here of the screen. The artery wall is the jagged thing on the side. The bacteria um, are... They're the things that have like little hands, it looks like. The clotlets are the long... Um, kind of objects um and that's some of these here it says points are awarded for shooting obstacles and bonus points are gained for completing each phase the stronger the patient's heartbeat upon completion the higher the bonus be sure to record your high scores on the back of this booklet really cool 
So there are enzymes. Um, it says here, you should attempt to shoot any enzyme you see in order to release its healing properties. Blasting enzymes is the only way you can restore lock st strength to the patient. Allowing one to pass you by has no adverse effects. Enzymes are present in phases 1 through 5. And um, it also says your antibodies. Um, these are released when your sub touches the artery wall. Destroy as many as possible. Uh, defense cells, their bacteria, all kinds of stuff in here. Um, small clotlets, as well as your final target, the blood clot, to await you in phase six. You must steer carefully through the indestructible clotlets to reach the blood clot. Be careful. Running into the clot is fatal to both you and the patient. Fifteen laser blasts are required to destroy it. All fifteen shots must be fired before the hot monitor goes flat. Then, if you're up for it, you can continue with the next patient. Hints from the designer in the booklet says, Avoid the walls. Not only are the antibodies dangerous, they also cut down the chance that an enzyme will appear. Get close to the bacteria in the blood clot. This allows your laser to shoot faster. Try to hit each bacterium at least once, but don't waste too much time on them. Time is your biggest enemy. Be ready for each new phase, since each requires a different strategy. Watch the heart monitor. If it begins to go flat, you'll want to speed ahead instead of shooting for more points. Pretty cool uh, advice there from the designer. And uh, let's see here. I want to take you also to an article I found about this game uh, on thegamehorde.com. They talked about they reviewed this game in uh, January 22nd, 2018. There's a cool part in the verdict for this review, and I, and I like this review. It says, uh, or Yes, it says, The verdict, an adaptation of Fantastic Voyage, could be a lot more interesting on a more modern console. That the Atari game still has a lot going for it, considering its limitations. Focusing on the patient's health makes shooting things more interesting. And the fact that different types of targets have, di have different effects on the heart monitor makes this more than just a game about shooting enemies. Despite the limitations of the Atari 2600, it does sell its premise quite well, even if it stretches believably a bit that a person would have veins that are jagged and constantly winding. With a challenging gameplay loop that requires thought to overcome, Fantastic Voyage is a well-balanced experience for people interested in retro games. He gives it a good review. I definitely give it a great review. Um, so I, I I do love this game. It is it is just so. Now now here what you're seeing here. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to shoot those or not. So I'm just kind of going past it because it looked like before when I shot those I was losing points or something. So I, yeah, I'm trying to be careful in what I shoot. So anyway. And in the manual, they talk about these things, but don't have pictures, so you kind of have to figure out what they are. Other than that, though, I mean, this is a fun game. I do like to play it a lot. I think I first heard about this game on Classic Game Room um, and No Square Gamers pages. Definitely check them out. They're the pros. Uh, I freaking love this game. It's fun. I love the colors in it. It's simple, but it's fun. I love how the enemies are actually, like, things in someone's body, like viruses and stuff. Uh, that's so cool. And just the fact that you fight a blood clot uh, for the final boss. For the time, for 82, that's pretty innovative to have a final boss that you keep fighting. And you see this repeat in games, obviously. But, you know, there weren't a lot of games out at the time that were kind of like that, that had a final boss. You know, that like a stage boss, I guess I should say. There's not very many of those. A lot of Atari games are kind of repetitive. So, because of that, too, this game, I mean... I'm going to have to rate it pretty high. Um, as I said, it's it's uh, flipping fantastic. I love to play this. I actually do play it whenever I plug in my Retron or whatever, and or my, or, um, uh, my 2600 if I have the cart nearby. I actually do have the box for this too. I have it CIB. The artwork for this is freaking amazing. I don't know who did that, but it's it, it looks like Salvador Dali, and I love it. There are people falling through an eye, and it looks very kind of sci-fi and futuristic um it, it's really funny i really like it and the fact that 20th century fox or fox interactive made this i mean just amazing so it looks like my life is over i give this a quad espresso must buy get it guys thank you
You are, you are watching, watching Ballistic, Ballistic Coffee, Coffee Boy. Boy.